Yo, what's up guys, it's Talon. Today I've got a quirky gameplay for you guys. Um, it's gonna be a game kind of about playing better in the late game after being behind, because it's a bit of a comeback kind of game. Um, yeah, so we're we're into a really like good scaling comp as well. I mean, Vayne, Yumi, Singe, just like very strong late game. But um, the reason I picked Quirky here is because I already had a Soraka, and then they picked Vayne, and I knew kind of like it's gonna be a pretty easy early game. Um, Quirky is really good scaling, so if I ever have a chance to kind of get into the late game, I'm definitely gonna take Quirky there, especially with Soraka, because their combo is really good. You'll you'll see later on in the game just how insane Soraka can be at times with the uh, Quirky. But uh, yeah, in this lane, like, my goal is mostly just to poke them and get Pryo. Like, I don't actually need to necessarily kill them, because it's pretty hard to kill Thane and Yumi in lane with uh, Quirky, because Quirky's not the strongest in lane. But you can really pick Quirky in any situation, because he's pretty uh, versatile. He doesn't really lose any lanes hard. You can go always just kind of farm up and get to late game, and then be really useful in the first dragon with your package and everything. But uh, I know that they have a Nunu as well, so I noticed that, and then that means that I'm going to want to ward early to be able to spot out the gank, and then I'm always going to want to be in a position where I'm avoiding the gank, because you know a lot of Nunus can gank level 2 or 3. So I definitely got to pay attention to that. Um, just kind of, every, every game I'll take note of their spells too, so I see that they have Ignite and two barriers in bot lane, which means that they don't have Exhaust, so if I dash onto someone, I'm not going to have my damage reduced really heavily. That's a very important kind of thing to note, especially if you're playing a champ that can potentially go all in, because Corky can dash on someone, so, so that's going to be important for me to kind of know that I have the right amount of damage. Like, if I, if I have a certain amount of damage, I know I can kill them, they, they won't be able to exhaust me or anything, I just got to be aware of the barriers. But in terms of the lanes here, like, we don't really win or lose this lane, like I said. We just kind of, we, we should have, like, a bit of priority in the lane. Amumu gets caught out here right away, so, like, kind of unfortunate he loses his flash. Um, yeah, so far in this lane, not much obviously going on. Just started, uh, just trying to get autos and Qs on Vayne whenever I can without taking them myself, so I can get a bit of a health advantage. So my jungler ends up just going, uh, I don't know what he's doing here, he's just going onto their blue buff, I guess. But, uh, because I know my jungler's not here, and like I said, Nunu's good early gank, I don't want to be in a position where it's easy to gank me, so I'm just going to be trading like I am here. Getting some poke off, hopefully having more health. I have st sustain with the uh, Soraka, so I'm not worried about taking a little bit of damage. It can get healed up pretty fast. Then every time that he, or that there's a minion that's low that I know Vayne wants to go for, I'll just throw a Q onto her and hopefully it'll land. That's what you always want to do when you're playing a champ with like a aiming abilities is kind of wait until their minions are low and you know they're going to want to go for the last hit. And then you use that ability there because then you can guarantee that you're going to hit it. Again here he's low so I know he's going to go for it, get a lot of poke onto him. And because he's so low, Nunu can't do much with their gank. I can just dash away. And we're going to be perfectly fine. Wasting your time as well. And I know Amumu's here, so now we have Pryo in the lane. They're all low, Am Amumu can just kind of do whatever he wants here now. Kind of mess up my poke. I'm pretty low mana, so I can't punish them too much more. So I just want to get a back off soon here. Which is exactly what I'm going to do. And uh, for the build, by the way, I'm going crit. I think crit Corky is definitely the best build. I mean, the burst damage on it is very insane. So I'm going to start Essence Reaver. Um, that's my first item here because you get a lot of damage out of it as well as the fact that you can restore your mana. Every auto attack, you get 3% of your missing mana back. So mana is pretty important on Corky, and this way you can get a lot of damage, but you don't need to go the mana immune, which can definitely make your damage worse early game. So that's why I go Essence Reaver. And then I do Infinity Edge and... Uh, what is it? Solari. Solari is very good with Corky as well. And then I'll go Void Staff because if you guys don't know, Corky's damage, I think it's 70 or 80% of his damage, something like that, uh, turns into magic damage. So I want the Void Staff because if they have magic uh, resist, that will penetrate that uh, magic resist. Um, and then last item, you can kind of go GA, Rift Maker, you could go Storm Razor. It's kind of up to you, just depending on the game.
Again, just kind of poking here. There's not a ton to, to talk about in this early game, just because, again, like I said, like some lanes are just like this. You know, Vayne and Quirky, they're both wanting to get to the like mid to late game. That's where they're strongest. But here he gets caught out by a nice play from my Soraka, and we almost get him, but not quite. Oh, do we get him? We do, okay. First blood. Nice, nice. So that was pretty much just all of my Soraka there playing really well. I see Nunu on the map, so we gotta back up. Get the minion. Duke that. Potentially have a kill here. Do get the kill. Oh, I get hit by that. Oh, I thought I thought he was aiming for the Soraka there. And I walked into that. That was just a really bad play for me. But yeah, like I said, the early game doesn't go the best. You'll see, you'll see in a minute. We definitely make some mistakes here. And we're just gonna talk about the late game. But it looks like a Mumu gets a kill there. Well played by him. Vayne might get a kill though. Yeah, Vayne gets another kill. So that's quite difficult. You see, I go around this way because I want to gank him. This way, he does not see me. So he thinks that only Soraka is there right now. But I'm actually really close and in a position to gank him. So I look for a kill on him here. And we end up getting a free kill just because we went around the side. And he didn't expect the gank. So that was a good play by me to kind of get good gold, good, good kill early game. Early game. Talking is hard. So now I see there's about 20 seconds left until drag. So I want to get it back for my package. You always want to back around 10 to 20 seconds before the first dragon spawns so that you can get your package on Quirky. And that's also about when you're going to get Essence Reaver. So at this point in the game, we're actually looking quite good. I mean, I'm up 900 gold onto the vein. Um, I can get a lot of stuff here. I have double buffs. But uh, yeah, we'll see how this fir first fight goes. What I probably want to do is just package onto someone and then my team hopefully follows up and I get some Soraka healing. That's ideal. I just want to cut someone off. I see Vayne here, so I'm, lo I'm looking for him. I think I can cut him off, her off. I think I do a good job with that package there, knocking him back, kind of baiting out two alts there. And you'll see here, I just choke this, like, that was a free kill, but I choked it. I just didn't auto attack Bane one time when I should have, and I die, so really dumb play for me. It was a good thought, I just messed up the execution on the play. And from here, Yumi gets a lot of gold, Bane gets a lot of gold, it's just not looking good. Because their scaling is definitely a bit stronger than ours, with the Singed's very good scaling, and then Singed with the Yumi, especially, as well as, of course, Vayne. We all know how good Vayne scaling is. So I see they're kind of low here, so I want to still look and see if I can maybe get some poke on them. That's my thoughts here. Especially because I have Annie. On my way. So I'm just seeing maybe I can sneak a killing on someone. That was a good flash by the Galio there. Looks like not much is going to happen, so I'm just going to go back to farm. Got more poke on the Galio, that's nice. Oh, Discord message. I think there's one more Discord message that pops up a little later in the game. Sorry about that. I forgot to mute my Discord messages on uh, when I was recording this game. But yeah, just going for plates now. We saw Vayne back, so we know we can get a plate or two. That'll be good. We got first turret for Fiora, so that's, that's really good. Getting mid turret, always very helpful. You can kind of use that to access the enemy jungle and everything. Get one more plate, hopefully. I stay around and we do get the plate. So gold-wise, I believe we're actually in a fine spot. Um, quirky, I believe I'm about even with the vein. But you can see that Yumi poke. It's insane when you get Luden's Echo on, on Yumi. It's just ridiculous. So yeah, looking on the map, I see Nunu's bot side. So that means that if I see an opportunity to go aggressive, I can. Always got to be paying attention to map when they have a jungler who's really prone to ganking like Nunu or Ramus or, or something like that. But wow, that, that Yumi poke is just disgusting. That champion is so not fun to play against. Uh, so I tell him to back up here. Um, I shouldn't have. Like we could have stayed because I knew Nunu wasn't here. But I guess I wanted to get BF Sword back, because BF Sword makes you pretty strong. And then um, my Soraka gets got out here. Partially my fault that I let Soraka stay there alone. And also, he probably shouldn't have backed quite in such a spot that he did. So we both definitely made mistakes there. And that ends up putting Vayne more ahead. Bro, that Yumi poke is just crazy. And then Vayne chases me down here now. I have exhaust, so I feel like I can probably kill him when he's chasing me. 
So I go for the trade and Bane's just too good. He gets me because he's just stronger right now in the game and he has the, the Yumi on him as well. I should probably have just flashed away because I can't really take a 1v2 like I did. I pinged Yumi there because her damage, like I was shocked at how much damage every Yumi Q was doing. So I pinged the Yumi ult just as like a joke. But yeah, at this point in the game, I mean, we're not doing great, so we're just kind of wanting to farm up and, and, and play for the later on in the game, because while they do have really good scaling, when Quirky gets to the late game, you can just almost one-shot a vein or any squishy champ, so I'm kind of banking on the fact that later on in the game, I'll just be able to kind of, like, one-shot one or two people, and then we'll be able to snowball, like, a fight from there, or I can get a nice package off, because um, we still have really good scaling as well with the Amumu and everything. So a lot of times when you're behind in the game, you just don't want to play too aggressively or take too many trades. But my team goes in here, so I've got to help them out a bit, you know. Luckily, I think we all make it out. But yeah, a lot of times, just kind of, if you know you're playing a scaling champ and you think you might be able to carry, just, just play for the more of the team fights and everything. They get another dive on us. That's well played by them. Not a whole lot we can do to prevent that, but he does get the shutdown on the vein, so it ends up working out for us. This, uh, okay, so we actually do get some kills here. Been a couple days since I played this game, so I don't remember everything that really went down. So we get that, we get that shutdown, that's quite good for us. Now we can probably go grab this turret. And I see Nunu going around here, so I feel like I can just kill her. I don't know what she was doing. So yeah, I get nice kills there and this is kind of when we start turning the game around i flash to get that shut down on the yumi and i get a double kill so this is what i'm kind of like okay like maybe we can start carrying the game like we're quite strong now my goal is at 8.4k i didn't see what what they're at but i'm definitely around enough to, to start popping off and so once i'm at this point in the game i'm playing just for myself like i want be the one to carry i'm gonna hope that soraka's following me around yeah I'm, I'm 1k gold up i'm super strong in this game now so despite the bad early game we just kind of farmed up you know my team you saw they were kind of kind of inting into people a bit i had a couple ints but in the end i was just trying to farm up and then wait until maybe they make a mistake and once they made that mistake i capitalize and get the shutdown because shutdowns give you a lot of freaking gold so even if someone's ahead a lot of gold on you it's not the end of the world as long as you can just grab a shutdown on them which I ended up doing. I got thinking like two shutdowns and now I'm like the strongest person in the game. I'm, I'm in a position to potentially carry a fight or two. So yeah, we're just playing for my damage here now in the fight. I have the Soraka, so I know I can really go aggressive and, and kind of test my limits here. See if I can maybe just pop off and we get first track on the dragon. Nunu's not here in time. So I see that since Nunu's not there, I just burst it down and we end up getting it. I use my package to probably try to cut them off here, but I don't end up seeing a good opportunity to go in. Maybe I'll go try to chase down the Singed. Oh, and I catch out Yumi because she gets there and there we go. The Yumi was being dumped all, alo all alone and, and we just package onto her and get a free kill. So again, just even if you're behind, when people are when people are just going to make dumb plays, they're going to get overly aggressive and, and then you can do things like that. Just catching out a, a dumb member, you can kind of find out the member who's positioning too aggressively and kind of target them a bit. I don't think oh, we do end up killing him. Okay, I was gonna say I thought Singe might get out there. I'm look. I'm going for Vayne here because I know Vayne's the threat. I end up getting a lot of burst damage on them, just spamming my abilities. Like you can see, this damage is insane. The champion is is so so broken. I'm getting quite low though, so I don't think I want to stay for too much longer. I don't have a lot of mana either. Yeah, we just gotta get out. I'm camping this bush because I think it's possible we can one-shot someone. So I think I end up staying to just see if I can get a kill. No? Okay, so we're, we're just gonna probably back. Yeah, at this point in the game, we're feeling pretty good. I mean, I'm in a position to carry with the almost 10k gold. Definitely the strongest on the team, but I still need to be targeting this Vayne in fights because if Vayne pops off, then it doesn't matter. Bane especially is good into like an Amumu because he's good into tanks and stuff and kiting in the back. So I want to try to burst him out in fights, not let him pop off too much. And that's kind of how we're going to win because the game really is about uh, Quirky carrying in the late game here. Not much else that like, 
my teammates can do. I just gotta get a lot of damage off and pop off, and my Serac has gotta heal me up, and then should be good from there. So we're just camping here. We know we have a lot of burst damage to one shot someone, so we're just trying to see if anyone maybe walks into the bush. This is a good thing a lot of times if they don't have vision on the Baron, because they might think that you're doing it, and then they'll just rush in. But we end up making a mistake and going for Singed. You, you don't really want to target Singed. He's really hard to kill. Like I said, I should be targeting the Zane here. But I don't, and unfortunately, Annie ends up falling down. So at this point, um, they could potentially look for a Baron, but since they're kind of low, I don't expect it entirely. I don't think they'll probably go for that. So I'm just trying to get mid prial because that way it makes it harder for them to go Baron, or if they go Baron, I can pressure the mid turrets and everything if we don't think we can contest the Baron. So basically when you're behind as well, you just want to keep the waves pushed out as far as you can. Whenever you see someone on one side of the map, try to push the other wave farther up so that they can't pressure your turrets and just try to preserve your turrets for as long as possible until you can get on more like equal gold with them because i'm pretty strong in this game but it feels hard to carry some of my teammates who are maybe like uh going a bit too aggressive you can see like the fiora here do they end up kidding it yeah no they don't but well, they might oh okay not the word it's pretty bad okay it was pretty bad three three died there so I, s I see I can maybe cut them off in this corner, in this choke point here, but I'm gonna have to end up flashing, I think, yeah. So what I should have probably done there is just gone and pushed the bot wave, and the reason is because there's no objective up on the top side of the map, so there's no there's no dragon or anything, so even if they kill my teammates there, they can't pressure much since we have the wave in a decent spot. You can see it right up in the top left. It's like, it's in a fine spot, so I should have instead been bot lane, matching the singe so he doesn't get the wave pushed in and get the turret. But now I'm going to just go for a package on the, the Baron because I see that they're obviously starting it since they got three of us. Um, I don't know if I want a blind package in here. I'll have to see what the health is. So I end up going for it. Trying to cut them off. Almost got the steal there. Close. But it looks like Fiora is going to die there as well. So... Here, we just have to stall at this point. There's not much we can do apart from stalling. They have Baron, we have two members dead, so I just need to, again, go for the waves. That's the important thing about stalling a game out longer. When you want to stall so a game out, the waves are what's really important. So I need to go top side here as soon as possible before they can get to the top wave and apply Baron buff. I need to get top and I need to shove that wave out as far as possible so they have less time to push more turrets. My goal here is kind of only to lose one inhib, and I see that might be the bot inhib based on the fact that they got a kill there and everything. So I want to go and probably get mid wave here, is what I think I should be doing. I'm not sure if I end up going for mid or bot, but I should be trying to predict the mid turret and just be like, okay, maybe we lose the bot turret, whatever. It looks like my teams do end do my teammates do end up saving the bot turret, so that's good. Um, we might not even end up losing an inhib here, which would be very very nice. Always winnable if you have your inhibs up. That's when it really gets hard is when you have the inhibs down because then you get the super minions and it, you're gonna have to clear them like so much. You can see I think like the biggest mistake from the other team is just not focusing enough on pushing and focusing too much on getting kills. Like the, you see that they're up in eight in kills but their gold's nowhere near as much as it should be and they don't have as many turrets as they could have taken here so like you can see I still have the most gold in the game or like just about so uh the, the galio's got more gold but apart from that here they overextend and again we're just stalling and they end up overextending for turrets because they're not properly split pushing they're just kind of they're just kind of pushing like uh all together in one so here i got a flash out i get stunned by vayne good play from him Oh, so close. We almost got the vein too. But yeah, again, you see like now my Fiora making a very smart play there to get the inhib. You can see all five of them were topside. Meanwhile, Fiora is just split pushing and they're overextending under a turret. So like, obviously once you're behind in a game, a lot of times it's not entirely in your hands. You do have to rely on them to throw a bit. But um, the best way to, to make those throws happen is to just focus on things that aren't fighting because you're not going to win a fight when you're behind a ton of gold. So instead, we're focusing on, on the waves, like I said, and they're pushing the top turret. They end up going too far into our top turret, get stunned under it. 
Meanwhile, we just have a, a few are just split pushing and taking their inhib. And now what we have here is we have a bot wave always pushing. So no matter what, the bot lane will be pushing because we have the minions there. And and that means that we only have to focus on two waves now while they have to focus on all three. So we always have that pressure in the bot lane that we can use to transfer to take like their jungle jungle or to take dragons and take other turrets and all that. So here now I'm on four items. So once you get the void staff, you're really gonna just like kind of one shot people. Your damage is ridiculous at this point. I'm saving my package for Elder, which is in a minute and a half. And the Elder fight is where I'm thinking we have the potential to win or lose the game. I'm looking for what item to go here and I end up going Storm Razor probably. I just want some extra burst damage in this game. I just one shot that guy, by the way. You see that damage is ridiculous. Just like once you get to this point in the game, like I said, with the void stuff, that damage is just too good. I'm farming up as much as I can to just again my goal is to 1v9 to carry my team as much as possible. Yumi is such an idiot here. We get another kill. You see, we're really not doing anything special. We're just catching their throws. Like, this is master grandmaster gameplay. Um, earlier on in the season, which means, you know, it's the equivalent to, like, Grandmaster later on. So, like, these are pretty good players, and they're making all these mistakes, you know? Like, definitely in lower elos, even more of these types of mistakes kind of happen. So if you're just, like, playing patient and just waiting for them to make the, the throws, it definitely works out. We get another kill here, and this is, like, looking close to GG here, as long as we don't make any big mistakes at this point. And another important thing to note is is this only really works when you have a champion who's really good in the late game like a quirky like if you're playing for example a draven you don't really want to do what i'm doing and wait and stall out the game but instead you'd want to play very aggressive if you're already behind early game and just try to like hopefully get a kill or two unless you have another lane that's winning hard but yeah here i almost end up inting but we survive we get a couple kills But yeah, I'm not I'm not focusing too much on the specifics of the game. It's more it's more just about kind of how to play from behind and everything. So yeah, if you're behind and you're an early game champion and you know your team um, is really bad in the late game, then you'll want to just try to force some plays. Maybe even roam, let them take your turret and and go somewhere else, and then try to get kills there to, to snowball a specific lane. So that's kind of the difference between when you're playing a late game versus early game champ, um, and you're behind. Maybe I'll have a gameplay of an earlier game champ uh, at one point that shows more of that, that type of a gameplay. So now we're just trying to force Baron here. Again, we have two inhibs pushing, so at this point in the game, it should be really hard for us to lose. Uh, all we have to do is probably grab Baron and, and force the end at this point. We have the Elder as well, so I have my package. You see that burst damage? I can out, I'm outsmiting my jungler. Like This damage is ridiculous. I think this is like definitely the best quirky build. Yeah, we catch out singed and should pretty much be GG. I think that's we're gonna look for the end here. Get some burst damage, take him out. Oh my gosh, that shielding. Finally got him. And GG. So that's it for the game today, guys. I hope you enjoyed um, just to kind of reiterate the main points. It's kind of just like focus on sometimes catching the enemy throws. If you're behind early on in the game and you have a good scaling champ like a quirky, just, just focus on uh, yourself and kind of scaling up and everything. See that damage, by the way, 39%. That's pretty crazy. But yeah, that's going to be it. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.